Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. It is orange day in rainbow week or rainbow fortnight depending on how many colours I decide to do. Today I made this card. This is going to be a birthday card for my sister whose favourite colour is orange. If you want to see it come together stick around because that's what this video is all about. The first thing I'm going to do is cut lots and lots of these stitched diamonds to make a quilt pattern. I happen to have two that are identical, so to half the number of runs through the die cutting machine, I'm going to washi tape them together and then run them through as a pair over and over again. I've got strips of mixed media paper here, so I'm going to cut out enough to create my pattern. So there's my pile of mixed media diamonds and from my diamonds, once I've quilted them all together, I'm going to cut this heart. And I think the easiest way to get them all stuck down is to take this piece of coffee, coffee, not coffee paper, copy paper, which is nice and thin so it won't add too much bulk. Put a bit of double sided adhesive down and then add, I'm going to add a diamond in the middle and build out from there because when I cut my heart I think I'm going to want a diamond in the middle somehow so it looks symmetrical. So all I'm going to do is get my diamonds, line them up as best I can and stick them all down. So there we have our quilt of diamonds. And I'm just going to position my heart on here and pick the right place. It's this is the sort of central diamond. I'm just trying to decide where I want it on the heart. If I want it there, I think that's about the right place. So now I'm going to tape that down with, to make sure it is central, so I've got this bit here in the same place, that bit there. Yep, that looks about right. I'm gonna tape it down with some washi tape. I'm gonna tape it to the outside to reduce any risk of tearing the bit that I want, the heart. And then we'll run that through the die cutting machine. So I'm gonna pop this on my grip mat and ink it up with some Distress Oxides I've got spiced marmalade which I think of as a bright and dried marigold which I think of as a pastel. Now you could do your colouring before you cut your diamonds or you could do your colouring before you cut your heart but I'm doing it after I've cut everything I want because I've now got this leftover which I can use if I want to and colour it however I want but also when I colour this I want to get maybe some darker bits going down into the stitching and give it a bit of a, a more defined edge with a bit of darkness around the edge and of course you can go over it again if you've coloured it prior to this but that's the way I've chosen to do it today get everything cut out and then colour it and then I can get all my colour exactly where I want it so I'm going to start with the pastel and just go over this. Get a nice blend. And then I'm going to come in around the edges with the spiced marmalade. Darken the, those edges up a bit, I think, just to give it a bit of definition. Thank you. 
to give it a bit of extra texture I'm just going to do some small splatters of water with a wet paintbrush not too much not too big and then I'm going to soak up that with some paper towel and you can see a little bit of mottling which I like and then I'm going to spatter on some of this uh, bronzy copper it's kind of an orangey metallic and just again not too big don't mind if it goes down in the channels between the what do you call it diamonds that's the word I'm looking for I think talking and splattering would be fairly straightforward and then give that a gentle dry with my hair dryer so for my card blank I'm using a five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch smooth white cardstock card and I'm going to pop this in the middle I'm going to pop it up on craft foam or foam tape to give it some dimension So I'm going to mark the middle point of my card so I know where to put my heart, the centre of my heart and I'm just going to make sure this little bit here and the bottom of the heart are aligned and that should be in the centre. Now we can erase that pencil mark. So for my sentiment, I'm going to use this stamp, which says happiest of birthdays to you. I want to stamp it on its die cut. So I'm going to create a quick jig. I'm just cutting the shape from the die. I'm not going to use that today, but I will keep that safe somewhere. And then I'm going to cut it out of vellum. So this is my jig, that's going to go in the corner there and I am going to secure it down with a bit of tape just to keep it still. And then I'm going to pop my vellum in there and then I'm going to line up my stamp on my vellum. That looks about right. And pick that up and I'm going to treat my vellum with corn flour because I'm going to heat emboss this sentiment in copper. Now I'm going to ink up my stamp with embossing ink. Press that down so it gets a good impression. Lift that up. I'm going to leave that there for a tick and then I'm going to carefully lift that off and pour over gold, not gold, copper embossing powder. This isn't a detail embossing powder but it's quite a, a chunky font on that stamp so I think it will probably be alright. I want to grab it so I don't disturb. Just tap it so the excess comes off this away so the vellum I use is quite a tough hearty vellum I bought it when I had a laser printer and wanted to print on vellum laser printers get very hot as they do their thing so I know that this vellum can handle being heated up so you want to experiment with the vellum that you do have so that you can see if it does indeed stand up to being heat embossed so before I stick my sentiment on I'm going to add some leafy die cuts I cut one from smooth white cardstock and one from vellum and to adhere them, I'm going to just add a tiny little bit of glue, tacky glue to the back. Pop that in there like that, just so it can pick up a little bit of glue 
and most of it. This one I did manage to tear as I got it out of the die, but it doesn't matter. I can disguise the tear. I just want to get that sort of central on there. And press it down with a bit of deli paper. I've had a few questions about what is deli paper um, and why do I use it? I use deli paper, well, first of all, this is the box that I had. It is, what does it say? Logan Wrap, 500 sheets, interfolded waxed paper. And I bought this for gel printing when I had a gel plate. And, oh gosh, I've, I've hardly made a dent in it really. I've had it for years. But I use it to press down gluey die cuts to keep my fingers from getting too gluey and to keep mucky fingers from messing up my die cuts. And the reason I use it is because it's waxed, it doesn't stick and tear and leave bits of itself on my projects. Um, but I'm guessing you could use greaseproof paper or any kind of waxed paper, baking parchment, anything that, as I say, is going to allow you to press down something gluey but not tear and leave bits of itself there so obviously you know you've probably got some greaseproof paper in your baking drawer if you have such a thing um, so try that if that's a, a technique you want to use so now I'm just going to pop on my wreath of leaves over the top of that vellum wreath offsetting it so that you can see the vellum leaf behind there we go now i'm having a thought i want to pop this up so there's a bit of separation between the front and the back layer but obviously because it's vellum i can't put craft foam behind it because it will be visible and ugly so I'm thinking I might use this to stick that on, like that. But I might cut it, or I'm going to try and cut it anyway, from this here, like that. To bring some of that quilted pattern forward and some of the white forward as well. I appreciate that I pretty much covered up the entire heart that I just spent ages making. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It all creates something it all adds to uh, the effect the overall effect of the card so let's try this and see how we get on yeah i quite like that i think that looks all right set on there so let's think about this a bit of what can we put on the back i'm going to use this is crafter's companion tape runner and it is quite good as a vellum tape runner it doesn't show through too much and i'm just gonna stick that middle bit the middle of birthdays centrally on there and that should work the venom's not going to curl too much and then i'm going to pop that on foam so it's getting quite thick and chunky this card but this is, as I say, for my sister, and I'm going to hand it over the next time I see her, so it doesn't have to go through the mail. I do want to get this on straight. I think about there. If I'd have planned it out, I might have been able to match the quilt pattern that's on the heart with the quilt pattern that's on the banner here, but, you know, that's a, a very fine detail that is probably not necessary but it's something that I've thought of <laughs> so next time maybe and now I want to add some enamel dots and I'm going to add them by making them myself so just going to ink up with spice marmalade a bit of this mixed media paper and I've got this big old cover plate die that cuts circles but I often use it to cut um, 
my own enamel dots from. So I'm just going to go and run that through my cold bug because it won't fit through my mini Gemini. But before I do that, thinking ahead here, I'm just going to pop some double sided tape on the back because then my dots will come out ready sticky. So those are cut nicely. I'll just pop some around and about all the different sizes. Keep them clustered around my heart so they don't eat up too much of the uh, what do you call it? Empty space. Don't eat up too much of the white space. That'll do. And to give them a bit of dimension and shine, I'm going to put some glossy accents over the top. And then they really will, really will, they really will look like enamel dots. There. I'm happy with that. So there we go, that's orange day done and a birthday card for my sister all ready to rock and roll. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've maybe picked up a few hints and tips along the way. If you have, do leave a thumbs up, a comment, come to the Facebook group, share your creations, subscribe if you want to see more from me and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.